Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ bless. Most High Christ bless. All right, off to Jez here once again. All right, one second, one second. Can y'all hear me? If you can hear me, type Y. If you cannot hear me, type N. If you can hear me, type Y. If you cannot hear me, type N. praises all praises all praises all right so as you see i don't have my reader with me here tonight so um, i'll be reading um for myself do i have a scribe do i have a scribe let me get a scribe it's not gonna be a long class uh i'm not gonna keep y'all long so Do I have a scribe? Anybody? That brother, brother, any brothers on that can scribe? Brothers, brothers, brothers. Looking for brothers, brothers. All right, I'm going to get started. Lord's will, our brothers on. Where's Michael? Michael McCall. Michael McCall. If Michael on, if he's not on, then let me get another brother to scribe. But I'm going to get started. <clears throat> um, so the name of the class is Remember Thy First Love. So a lot of times you come into this, a lot of time you come into this truth. And you've been in the truth for, you've been in the truth for some years. And this goes for me, myself also. A lot of times you come into this truth, you've been in the truth for some years, uh, maybe a couple months. And... You feel as though your spirit is starting to, you become stagnant. You you probably hit a, a plateau in your spirit or something like that. You become stagnant. And you feel as though your spirit not really growing, it's not going anywhere. And and you feel as, you start to, you, you never really become stagnant. You never really become stagnant. Either you, either your spirit is growing or either, either you're moving forward in this truth or you're moving backwards. Or you're regressing. So you never really become uh stagnant at all but the thing is that's why the class is titled remember thy first love because a lot of us come in this truth and been here for a while maybe you're doing a lot of work you're starting to burn out so you're starting to dwindle you're starting to dwindle your spirit's starting to diminish so to speak all right um so the spirit is a lift up you know to to um the spirit is i mean this class <laughs> sorry this class is to what to to lift your spirit up, to regain your spirit, to remember your first love and its truth. Like the leadership say, whatever your, uh, whatever your desire, whatever your, um, whatever you like doing, find it in this truth, man. Find it in this truth. Whatever you like, like a br brother, you got brothers that rap, make music, make beats. Um, you got uh, those that like uh, far as uh, books and so forth and so on, and like history and so forth and so on. So they put. They they lean towards that in order to keep themselves going in this truth. Okay, that's what they lean towards in order to keep themselves growing in this. You know, keep them going. You understand? Like the brothers that sing song that sing, you got sisters that sing or rap, whatever the case is. <coughs> that keeps them going in this truth. Keep making more music, more music, putting out more albums or whatever the case is. All right. Like for example, um, 
also Passover. Passover is that's an example of your spirit growing from the from the uh, the past year. Okay, your spirit is supposed to be uh, on the up and up. It's not supposed to be regressing. The next Passover you getting worse. Next Passover you getting worse and worse and worse. Nah, it's supposed to be growing. Your spirit is supposed to keep growing, elevating to new heights, to new levels in this truth. Okay. So, with that being said, um, let's get let's get the book of let's get Revelations two, chapter two, verse four. The book of Revelation, chapter two, verse four. All right. So, the book of Revelation, chapter two, verse four. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. <coughs> All right. I'm gonna read that again. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. So this is Christ speaking. He said, look, nevertheless, I have somewhat. Some, he said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Against who? Against us. Because thou hast left thy first love. Your first love, when you come in this truth, you had that zeal. You was ready. You was ready to pass out flyers. You ready to hold posts on camp. Okay? You was eager to come to the Sabbath. That was your first love. Whatever needed to be done in the school, whatever needed to be done in the, um, in the body, in the congregation, you was dead. Brothers call you, you was dead. Okay? You was dead. You the first man dead. You the first sister dead. <coughs> All right? So it said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. That's that zeal. Your first love in this truth is that zeal we all had when we came in. So what is Christ saying? We, we you gotta keep you gotta get that zeal back. The zeal that you had when we first came in, that's the zeal you gotta get back. All right. Verse five. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent. You see that? So even you. So what? You this person is. <coughs> this person is regressing. They going backwards in their spirit. They losing that candlestick. The spirit starting to diminish. So Christ is giving us a reminder here. The Lord is reminding us, like, look, remember your first love. Remember the zeal you had when you first stepped in this. Um, when you first stepped into the truth, when you came through them doors. Remember that. So in, in verse five, it says, "Remember therefore from where, from where thou, from whence thou art fallen, and repent." Okay, you got to repent. All right. It says, um, and repent and do the first works. All right? The first works is who you that's who you was. You was the you was always there doing the first work. The first works is the truth. <coughs> that comes first. That's the truth. <coughs> All right. It says, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, repent and, and do the first works. All right. Or else. <coughs> Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick, okay, out of his place, except thou repent. Now, <clears throat> he say you remove the candlestick. The candlestick is what? Your spirit. Once the, hey, listen, once the Lord removed that candlestick, you finish. Now you're going to be out there eating uh, chicken and macaroni and cheese on Passover. <clears throat> now you back in Christianity. Now you back talking foolish. Now you talking about IUIC. Okay? <clears throat> Cause the, the most high removed that spirit. He moved that candlestick. Alright? Let me see if I can find the precept for that. One second, one second. One second, Israel. Hey, alright, all praises, uh Moses. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> one second, one second, one second, one second. Let me see if I can find it. Because the candlestick is your spirit. The candlestick is your spirit. <clears throat> if anybody know what that says, it's in Proverbs. It's in the book of Proverbs. 
I think it's chapter 27, if I'm not mistaken. All right, if I find it later. But the candlestick is just spirit, all right? So I'm going to read verse 5 again. We're back in Revelations. All right? Book of Revelations, chapter 2, verse 5. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. And do the first works. The first works is that zeal you had on you. That first works is who you was when you first stepped in these doors. You had that fire in you. Okay? <clears throat> Brothers can count on you. They can depend on you. You're reliable. Right? That's the first works. Or else. So or else meaning what? If you do that, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> that's what that's what the Lord is saying. If you get back that spirit that you had, I'm going to remove that spirit. I'm going to remove that spirit. So either you regain the spirit that you had, that zeal that you had when you first came in. Or else, if you don't want to do that, if you keep if your spirit keep diminishing, I'm going to just remove it out the way. I'm going to just move you on out the way. All right? <clears throat> Hold on one second, one second. <clears throat> one second is real. Try to see if I can find the uh, the candlestick. All right, <laughs> ain't coming up for me. All right, but like I was saying before. You gotta, uh, you gotta get that spirit back. You gotta get it back. All right. So it says, "Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly. All right, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent." So the Most High, the Lord is saying, "Look." Either you come back with that zeal you had, either you get that fire back inside of you, or I'm going to remove your spirit altogether. I'm just, just remove it. Just get it out the way. Watch this. Let's get the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse, verse 43. Matthew 12, 43. A lot of us may feel like, uh, you know... You get you get complacent in this truth, pretty much. You get complacent, you get comfortable, um, and you just you just feel as though uh, your spirit start just diminishing. You start coming to Sabbath. Now you coming to Sabbath uh, instead of coming every day, you coming once a week. Not once a week, but you come in every every two weeks. Then it start being once a month, once every two weeks, once every three weeks. Be like, dang, when the last time we seen this brother? But that's because your spirit is starting to diminish. You don't show up the Sabbath. We ask you, we, when we do see you, we say, yo, what's up, man? Why you why you ain't show up the Sabbath? You ain't got no excuse. That's bad. The, the day you the day you don't show up the Sabbath and you ain't got no excuse for it, that, listen. <laughs> that's bad. That's bad. Most I is starting to remove that candlestick. You better, you better get your first love back. That's what he mean. Get, you better get that zeal back, or you, I'm gonna just move you out the way. All right. Let's get Matthew twelve forty three. <clears throat> the book of Matthew chapter twelve verse forty three. When the unclean spirit. Is going out of a man 
So the unclean spirit will be sent. He walking through dry places, um, seeking rest, and findeth none. So that's that. That's that. Um, that's your uh, the spirit. That's sin. That's your battle. When you come in this truth, you come. You come in. You sh you're strong. You mighty. You know. You know scriptures. Okay. You can quote scriptures left and right. You studying. You, you going hard. Right. That's because the that unclean spirit left you now. Right. Then he saith, "I will return into my house from whence I came. Was for whence I came out. The house is you." You the house. You the apartment. You the condominium that the spirit left and now he's coming back. He's coming back for, he go away for a season. He'll be back, right? And when he has come, when he come back, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Meaning what? You ain't been studying. You got complacent. You stop coming to Sabbath every week. Okay, you, like I said, you showing up once every two weeks. All right, now you come in once a month. Now we haven't even heard from you. Now you got pictures up, you ain't got no fringes on. Okay. Why? Because that spirit done came back now. Whatever your battle was, it could be cigarettes, it could be some type of drugs. Okay, it could be lust, whoremongering. Could be a whatever spirit that you had on you, okay? Uh, <clears throat> uh, anger spirit, whatever it is. Now it's, it's it, it came back stronger now, because you ain't been studying. So now you don't even know how to fight it. You don't even know how to fight the fight the demons that's on you. Why? Because you ain't been studying. You don't know the scriptures to go to in order to like look. If if you got an anger spirit, you don't know scripture to sit down and say, okay, all right. <clears throat> All the scriptures on anger, you don't even know how to, you don't know what scriptures to go to to deal with your anger. So you don't know what scriptures to go to now. Right? Anything dealing with as far as lust, you, your mind, you got a block in your mind. You don't even know what scriptures to go to as far as lust now. You don't know where to go. You just open the Bible and you like, oh, okay. <laughs> what, what, what now? But this is what, this is what, um. This is what it's saying. Now your battle, your, whatever your battle is, that spirit that came back, you don't know how to deal with it. Since you don't know how to deal with it, let's read on. Verse 45. Then go up he, that's, that, that spirit, that demon, your battle, the sin, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So now that that one spirit you battling now, that spirit that overcame you, and now seven other wicked spirits done, is on you now. So it's no longer you just smoke. You just smoked a couple of cigarettes. <clears throat> now you smoking weed. Your weed done got laced with, with with crack or something like that. Now you now you smoking crack. Now you out on the streets. You selling all your your belongings. Maybe all your wife belongings, your children belong. Now you you bugged out now. You bugged out now. Because seven other spirits then came back more wicked than the first spirit you you was dealing with. And because you didn't know how to deal with that spirit and keep that spirit at bay, that your battle. Now all these spirits that overcame you. And now that candlestick. The Lord just took that candle, just, just remove your, your, just remove you out the way altogether. You finish, and there's no coming back from it unless you repent. All right. So I'm gonna read that again. It says they go up he and take up with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. All right. Even the generation that's here today. This wicked generation that's here today. Okay. All right. So let's drop that. Let's get Sirach, uh Sirach chapter 2. 
So now, what can I do with this? Uh, what can I do? I done became complacent. I done became complacent in this truth. I'm losing that spirit. I'm losing that zeal. Um, and of course, we all battling. We all going through our uh, whatever uh, um, battle it is that we are that we are going through. All right, we all got our trials, our tribulations, and sometimes somebody else's trial, and tribulation could be a lot harder than the next person's trial and tribulation. All right, <clears throat> but nonetheless, we all go, we all gonna go, we all got our, our, our own personal trials and tribulations that we're dealing with. Whether it be marital, personal, marital, or congregational. Okay? Watch this. Sirach chapter 2. We should all know this. We probably got some new people on. <clears throat> the book of Sirach chapter 2 verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Why? Because as soon as you walk through them doors, as soon as you say you're an Israelite, temptation is coming from all angles. Don't think you're going to be sitting in this truth and you ain't going to get tempted. Okay? That's Christianity. You ain't Christianity. All right? No. When you come, in, when you come through these doors, you're going to get, te you're going to get tempted. Why? Because now, you, now you're keeping God's laws now. God's laws require what? Discipline. So, with keeping God's laws, that, that's going to require you to keep, to have discipline. So, when you when you call yourself having discipline, guess what's going to come? Temptations. Temptation is going to rise. Alright, so it says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. <coughs> set thy heart aright. So, set your mind. Your heart is your mind. Set your mind aright. And constantly endure. We got it. We must endure. We must fight. We must fight. All right. And make not haste in the time of trouble. So make not haste meaning what? Don't run. When trouble come your way, when your trials hit, don't run. The Lord trying to teach you something. Certain situations the most high put you in to try to show you something, to try to purge a certain spirit out of you. So don't run. All right? That's why I say constantly endure. All right? Watch this. Let's get Matthews uh, 24 real quick. What I want, what I want. Yes, Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. This is what Christ said, okay? But he that shall endure, that shall fight. Okay, what's the, uh, what's the root word of, uh, not the root word, but from, from in uh, the word endure, you get endurance. Endurance. <clears throat> and remember, the word endurance is how long you're able to do something. That's endurance. How long can you keep it up? That's your endurance. Okay? So that's where endure comes from. I mean, that's when the word endurance comes from endure. All right? So it says, but he that shall endure unto the end. The same shall be saved. So it's a constant fight. It's a constant battle we're going to go through in this truth until Christ return. It's, going, it's a constant. It, it is what it is. It is what it is. Right? Watch this. Revelation. What happens if we endure? If we fight? 
Book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. So what we have already is what? We have the commandments. We have the Bible. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. We, we know that we are Israelite. We're keeping the, we're keeping the law, statutes, commandments, and the faith of Christ. That's what we have. That's what we must keep. So it says, but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. <clears throat> and he that overcometh, overcometh what? Your trials, your tribulations, your battles. If you overcame, that means you endured to the end. But he, it says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works. Okay, what? Keeping what? The commandments, the laws. Until the end, so the saying the same thing in Matthew 24, 13. To him will I give power over the nations. Mm -hmm. We all looking for that power, man. We all looking for that power over these nations. Because you see what these nations are doing to us right now. You see the things that's going on out here in the world. And how we're being treated as a people. And the oppression that our people are suffering. So I can't wait. Lord's will, I'm able to get that power. Lord's will, I overcome, and I'm able to get that power. All right? It says, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter. Shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive the my father. All right? So the same power that Christ going to get, we're going to get it too. All right? Lord's will. Lord's will. All right? Let's get back to Sirach 2. <clears throat> Sirach chapter 2, verse 2. Set thy heart aright, meaning your mind. Set your mind aright. All right? And constantly endure, constantly fight until the end. And make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him. Cleave unto the Lord. And depart not away. So don't get scared and run out this truth. Now we can't. Now brothers been trying to contact you. Nobody can get in touch with you no more. <clears throat> you done change your number. Because a persecution that hit your way. A little fence. That you couldn't handle. So now you're gone. Now you have this truth. It says cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou may be thou, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take it cheerfully. So whatever your trial, tribulation is brought upon you, the Bible said we must take it cheerfully. I know, I know, I know. That's take it cheerfully. I can't pay my rent. Take it cheerfully. Okay, I lost my job. The, look, the scripture says you got to take it cheerfully. And be patient. This is the key right here. You got to be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. All right? So we must be patient. We got we to gotta take it cheerfully. Keep it moving. Like I said, you, the most I don't put you in certain situations. He's trying to purge the spirit out of you. But you got to take that thing cheerfully. All right. Verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You see that? For gold is tried in the fire. Because what? What, 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 do the, um, what do the smiths, what do they do with the gold? They put the gold through the fire to do what? To purify it, to get out the impurities of the gold. So that's what the most I is saying about us. We for gold is tried in the fire. Likewise, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, the furnace of your trials. <clears throat> so your trials and tribulations will be that fire that you'll be going through. That's the fire. And you that gold, you that gold that's gonna get tried in that fire. Once you come out of it, you're supposed to be a new man. Okay. Just like, just like gold is tried. Likewise, we're going to be tried. 
Why? Because the Most High is trying to purify us into what? Fine gold. Just like it says in Isaiah. Fine gold. All right? Understand that. All right? Let's read on. It says, Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest you fall. So it says, wait for the Most High mercy. Don't go aside. <clears throat> don't go off your own counsel. Don't do your own thing. Why? Because you're going to fall. That's why the leadership set men up over, over uh, brothers and uh, set men up over brothers, set sisters up over other sisters. Okay? That been the truth with more experience. Who went, who went through something already. So they gain that experience. So they set them up over. Um, so a brother will be set up over a brother or whatever the case is. A rank will be set up over a brother. And you got the sisters that be set up over the sisters. Okay. To help you with your issues. To help you with your problems. But how you gonna, how you going to get the help if you don't call? You don't let nobody know something. Right? So it says, Ye that fear the Lord, wait. For his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. Okay, ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. All right. So with that, let's let's go to two um Sirach 30. I see a sister already done went there already. Uh Sirach chapter 30. One of my favorite chapters. And Sirach. The book of Sirach, chapter two, chapter thirty, verse one. No, I'm sorry, verse twenty-one. Let's go to verse twenty-one. Sirach, chapter thirty, verse twenty-one. Uh, it says, "Give not over thy mind to heaviness." Heaviness would be what? Heaviness would be what? That'd be what depression. Okay, that'd be some type of depression that. Um, you may you may be going through or whatever the case is, okay. It says give give not over thy mind to heaviness. Or you could be <clears throat> a brother could say he losing his spirit. He losing his spirit. He don't feel as though he he don't feel as though his spirit is right. <clears throat> so he's losing his spirit. He's starting his spirit starting to diminish, and he knows that. He's not putting in his first works. He not he you know he, his work his work ethic is has diminished, and we see it. Okay. So it says, "Give not over thy mind to heaviness, and afflict not thyself in thy own counsel." Because a lot of us we a lot of us do that. We afflict ourselves in our own counsel. Oh, if I would have done this, if I'd have done that, this. I would have had this outcome instead of instead of that outcome. Uh, <clears throat> this wouldn't have happened if I would have said this. This wouldn't happen if I would have said that. If I'd have made this decision, I would have been in a better. If I'd have made this decision, then I, I could have been in a better place. <clears throat> but because of the decision that I chose to make this time around, now look at me. It's my fault. So that's you afflicting yourself in your own counsel. So it says, "Give not over thy give, give give not over thy mind to heaviness, and afflict not thyself in thy own counsel." All right. One second. Um. Some is. Let me see some. One second, one second. No. Yes, let's get Isaiah chapter twenty six, verse three. Right, the what ifs. Right, exactly, exactly. The what ifs. What if I did this? What if I did that? Exactly. 
Let's get the book of Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. It says, Thou would keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. So the Most High will keep us in perfect peace only if our mind is stayed on him. How's our mind staying on the Lord? Going through this Bible, studying, listening to uh, classes. However you listen to class, some people uh, some people go watch the videos over and over. Some, like me, I record. And while I'm, while I'm out and about, I listen to the recordings. Okay? But that's a way of keeping your mind on the Lord. All right? Okay, so it says, Thou would keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. So even through your issues, even through your, your problems and situations, keep your mind on the Lord. Call a brother. All right? Don't wait till the last minute to call a brother. After you done did your sin or whatever the case is, then brothers want to pick up the phone. <laughs> like, yo, man, I, uh, yo, I messed up. I effed up. Now brothers want to pick up the phone. No, call a brother before that happens. All right? Watch study. Watch videos. Okay? Record a class so you can play the class back through your mind. All right. Like I said, let's go for myself. Let's go for myself. Okay. These are things we must constantly do. You got Clubhouse. Leadership is on Clubhouse uh, pretty much throughout the day. Throughout the day. So you can, that, that's another way to keep your spirit going. Listen, being on Clubhouse. All right. <clears throat> so that's a, that's a way to keep your spirit going. Okay. Let's go back to Sirach 30. It says, Sirach chapter 30, verse 21. It says, Give not over thy mind to heaviness, and afflict not thyself in thy own counsel. So don't beat yourself up in your own counsel. Like the brother said, the what ifs. What if I did that? What if I did this? What if I did that? Don't do that. It says, The gladness of the heart is the life of man. So the gladness of your mind, the gladness of your mind is the what? The life of man. And the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. The joyfulness. What? What? Who? Who knows? A, uh, let me see. Who knows a scripture on on how we keep, uh, how we build our joy? Who knows a scripture? Remember, it said the gladness of the heart is the life of man, and the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. What is our joy? What is our joy? Who knows? What is our joy? What's our joy? What's our joy? The commandments? Okay. All right. All right. Any more? That's it? What's our joy? The will of the Lord. Deuteronomy 28, 47, that was our, that was supposed to be our joy. <laughs> Obviously, you see we in captivity, so we didn't keep that. Okay, the scriptures, all right. All right, okay. All y'all right, all y'all right. Give me, uh, let's get Nehemiah 8 and 10. Nehemiah 8 and 10. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Then he said unto book, all right. The book of Nehemiah, chapter eight, verse ten says, "Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them, for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord, unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. You see that? Neither be ye sorry." 
For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The Most High is our joy. The Most High is our joy. I'm going to read it again. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. So don't be feeling bad. Don't be feeling sad and depressed. Don't, don't be counseling. Just like I said in Sirach 30, don't be uh, <coughs> counseling yourself. It says, neither be ye sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the joy of the Most High, that's our strength. All right? Understand that. That's our strength. Okay, let's go back. Book of Sirach, chapter 30, verse 22. The gladness of the heart is the life of man, and the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. So how do we get that? How do we prolong our days? By having the joy of the Lord. By having the joy of the Lord. That becomes our strength. That's how we prolong our days. Okay? How you have the joy of the Lord? We got feast days, man. We just celebrated Passover. One of the greatest feast uh, uh, feast days that we had. Okay? That brought great joy. Okay? All of our high holy days brings great joy. When we serve it with gladness. Okay? It, it does what? It prolongeth our days. Understand? Like when Deuteronomy 20, uh, 2840 said. Let's get that real quick. Someone brought that up. <clears throat> Let's get that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, of the mind, for the abundance of all things. This whole planet is ours. But we didn't serve the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness. So guess what? The most I did what? He put us in captivity because of that thing. So because we didn't serve the Lord with joyfulness and gladness at this time, now we what? We serve in captivity until this day. So now we got to, we got to, the whole point now in this truth as, as uh, repentant, we got to get that joyfulness and gladness back for the Lord. Okay. For his high holy days that he gave us as a heritage. We got to get that joy back. We got to get that gladness back to do what? To prolong our days. That's how we're going to prolong our days, man. All right. Let's go back. The book of Sirach, chapter 30, verse 22. Again, the gladness of the heart is the life of man, and the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. Verse 23. Love thy own soul. The scripture says, love thy own soul. And comfort your heart. Comfort thy heart. Comfort your mind. Remove sorrow far from thee. All right? Why? Because these things are going to happen. When you go through your trial and tribulations, you're going to feel, um, you're going to feel sorrowful. It's going to bring heaviness to you. But the Bible, the scriptures are telling you how to deal with it. It's telling you what to do, how to deal with it. <clears throat> it says, love thy own soul and comfort thy heart. Remove sorrow far from thee. How do we comfort our how do we comfort? Now, everybody should know this one. You might have some new people on, but what comforts us? Remember, it says, love thy own soul and comfort thy mind. Your heart is your mind. What comfort us? I want a scripture. What comforts us? What comforts us? Who knows what comforts us? <clears throat> yes, the scriptures. I, hey, I want a script. I need a scripture. 
That's good. Very good. But I need a scripture. Who got it? Yes, very good. Romans 15 and 4. Let's get that. Romans 15 and 4. Let's read that. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. So the things that were written in the past, right? That's before time. Before our time, right? Were written for our learning. Okay? It says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures. Through patience and comfort of the scriptures. So yes, the scriptures comfort us. Might have hope. Meaning what? The things that our forefathers and foremothers went through. Okay? These are the things that we must be going through the scriptures and looking for. So any of our trials and tribulations that we're going through, our forefathers went and foremothers went through that. <clears throat> the scriptures have it recorded. So now what we do, whatever trials and tribulations we are battling, we go through the scriptures and we find out how our forefathers and foremothers dealt with it. That's, that's, that's what it's saying. I'm going to read it again. For whatsoever things were written before time, were written for our learning. They're examples for, for, uh, for uh, what to do and what not to do. Okay? Why? Because our ancestors, they, did, they went through it. They went through it. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Why? Because when we, when we searching, we going through the scriptures... Hmm, this happened to me, this happened to me. Let me see how King David dealt with it. Let me see how our forefather Abraham dealt with it. Okay, our forefather, uh, let's see how Paul, what Paul did. Let's see what Christ did. Let's see what he said about it. Jeremiah, Isaiah. For the sisters, let, uh, anything the sisters may be going through. Let's see how Judith dealt with it. Especially situations in the marriage. Especially those situations. We can go through the, the scriptures to see, okay, how our forefathers and foremothers dealt with this situation or dealt with that situation. And how, what was the solution behind that situation? All right. Let's go back. Matter of fact, I want, uh, one second, let's get another um, precept for that. One second. Um... Let's get Job, book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. Is that what I want? Yes. <clears throat> the book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. It says, For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare, prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. So what is Job saying here? For we must inquire, investigate of the former age. Saying the same thing in Romans. The things that were written before time. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. So we must prepare ourselves to the search of our fathers in the Bible. In this Bible. Alright. So let's go back. Book of Sirach, chapter uh, 30, verse 23. It says, Love thy own soul and comfort thy heart. So we know now the comfort, we comfort ourselves with what? The scriptures. That's how we comfort our mind. Remove sorrow far from thee. For sorrow have killed many. You see that? Sorrow have killed many. Depression. Yes, it have killed many. 
and there is no profit therein. All right, there's no profit therein. Read that again. It says, love thy own soul and comfort thy heart. Remove sorrow far from thee. For sorrow hath killed many, and there is no profit therein. Okay? So you got to remove that thing far from you. Any depression, anything kicking, or you feel as though you're losing your spirit, all right? You got to remove that far from you. Okay? Right? Verse 24. Envy and wrath shorten the life, and carefulness bringeth the age bringeth the age before time. Alright. Verse 24 it says, Envy and wrath shorten the life, and carefulness, and care and carefulness bringeth age before the time. So that's the person that's always stressed out. This person is always worried. Okay. They 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 uh <clears throat> they were they they got they envy, they always envying, they very envious, jealous of someone, and all that do is what brings wrath. Alright, and that shortens your life. Understand that. It says envy and wrath shorten the life. You see it now without people out now, because there's a bunch of envy and a bunch of jealousy and, and wrath going on. And that's why we're killing each other in the streets. Alright, so it do shorten the life. We went we see. It. We see it firsthand. And carefulness bringeth age before the time. Meaning what? You, this person is always worrying, man. You ever see the brother, you ever see a brother that's about he about 25, but his whole he his hair is salt and pepper already. <laughs> he got he got wrinkles through his forehead already. Alright? Because that brother's always worrying. You and you look at him, he's like, yo, damn, how old? So, so now you guess his age. Now how old how old I look? Now you like, yo, you 40? You're like, nah, nah. You know, he getting mad now. But look, that that's the way he looks. Why? Because he he's always stressed out, always worrying. A lot going on in his life. You know? All right, <clears throat> brother, look like he's forty-five, going on fifty, but he's only twenty-five. Yeah. Says envy and wrath shorten the life, and carefulness and careful carefulness bringeth age before the time. All right, so it's verse twenty-five, a cheerful and good heart will have a care of his meat and diet. So what what that going into? That's your health now. A person that's always a person that is. Uh, a person that has a good heart, a good spirit, okay, on them, they, you're going to have, meaning what, you're going to have a care of your health, okay, you're going to have a care of your meat and your diet and so forth, you're going to take care of yourself, pretty much, all right, you're going to take care of yourself, okay, let's get, um, from there, from there, let's get Sirach 6, no, yeah, Sirach chapter 6, so, what can what what can we do to what the what can brothers do to get get that spirit back to build that spirit back up? What can brothers do? What can sisters do? But mainly talking to the brothers, mainly talking to the brothers, brothers that lose that zeal, that lose that spirit, <clears throat> and they don't know how to get it back. The Book of Sirach, chapter six, verse two. Says, extol not thyself in the counsel of thy own heart. So don't exalt yourself in the counsel of your own mind. Don't you understand? Says that thy that thy soul be not torn in pieces as a bull strain alone. Everybody, we all know what happens to a bull that strain alone from the pack. You get tore up by the line. Get tore up. So it says, extol not thyself in the counsel of thy own heart, that thy soul. Be not torn in pieces of the bull strain alone. Right? We all look, listen. That's why leadership has that's why leadership has been set up. Alright? And that's why leadership set brothers uh like I said before. That's why they put brothers over brothers, sisters over uh, other sisters that have more experience. 
okay, to help you in your situation so that you don't extol yourself in your own counsel. All right. Um, from there, let's jump to verse... Let's jump to verse uh, 32. Sirach chapter 6, verse 32. It says, My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. So we gotta want to be taught. Okay, we gotta wanna, we gotta have that desire. We gotta have that desire. We gotta have that zeal, that fire. We gotta get it back with our first love. It says, My son, if thou wilt, thou thou shalt be taught. But you gotta have a willing spirit to be taught. And if thou will apply thy mind, if thou will apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent, meaning you will be wise. All right. Verse thirty-three. If thou love to hear, so you gotta have, you gotta be want, you gotta be ready to hear. All right. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow thy ear, thou shalt be wise. So you gotta be ready. Y'all be ready to listen, man. A lot of brothers get counsel and then they don't listen to the counsel. So now things, since you don't listen to the counsel, things don't go your way. Now you upset. Now you mad. Because you didn't pay attention to the counsel. You didn't take heed to the counsel. So now you're in a situation now where... <laughs> what now? Read it again. It says, my son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. So we must bow down our ear. We must learn to listen. Learn to follow counsel. And everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Verse 34. It says, Stand. It says, Stand in the multitude of the elders. And cleave unto him that is wise. That's why the lead, that's why we have the leadership. It says, Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. All right. <clears throat> so meaning what? What that mean? So you gotta wanna you gotta you gotta uh you gotta have that spirit to be around the leadership, man. You gotta wanna be around leadership, okay? Whether uh whether you gotta wanna uh anytime leadership around, you gotta look, you gotta wanna spend that time to be around. Them. Why? To gain understanding, to get more wisdom. Alright? Listen to more classes. Alright? It says stand in the multitude of the elders. And cleave unto him that is wise. Cleave unto him that is wise. Verse 35. Be willing to hear every godly discourse, every godly conversation. This is the thing. This is listen, you want to learn how to build your spirit up or whatever. This is you gotta learn to follow counsel. You gotta learn to do these things. Stand the multitude of the elders. All right, because why? It's nothing but wisdom coming from them. Why? Because of the experiences that they, they, uh, all the experience that they gained over the years. Now they're able to share it with us through the scriptures. Okay, they're able to share it with us through the scriptures, the scriptures, right? And it says, "And let not the parables of understanding escape thee. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee, but get thee be times unto him, meaning get." Get to him quickly. If you see a man understanding, get to him quickly. All right. <clears throat> and let the and, and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. It says and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. All right. So all that goes back to what? Stand the multitude of the elders, man. Follow counsel. Listen to counsel. Now, in verse 37, it says, Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. 
he shall establish thy heart. So once we once we learn to meditate, uh, open this Bible up. That's why the leadership put instituted the four scriptures a day, the four chapters a day. We're supposed to be reading the four chapters a day. Why? Right, all of that is doing what? You meditating. That's a form of meditation right there. It says, let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandments. And he shall establish thine heart. He shall establish your mind. And give thee wisdom at thy own desire. You got to desire the wisdom. It's up to you. The most I, the most I put it right there. You got to want it. You got to want to get your spirit right. You got to want to build your spirit back up. You can't just be sitting around on oh, my spirit diminishing. Uh, I feel just, I feel like uh, my spirit being I feel like I destroyed my spirit. I don't know what to do to get it back. Man, all that, all that is, is a, uh, that's the yellow make me sad, brother. No, nah, get in there and get your spirit back. <laughs> get in there, get back in the game. That's get get back in the game. Get your spirit back. All that other stuff, that's just some nonsense. Because now you want somebody to feel bad and so forth and so on, so you put on a sad, a sad story. No, get well, get your spirit back. <clears throat> All right? Get your spirit back. Remember the, remember the Lord said, remember thy first love. You got to remember that thing. Remember, remember the way it was when you came in this truth and you had that zeal, you had that fire on you. So you what you got now? You got to go back and and, re, and gain that. That's a part of repentance, right there. It's a part of repentance. You got to go get that spirit back. You got to fight for it. All right, let's read that again. It says, "Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in His commandments. He shall establish thy own, thy, thy heart and give thee wisdom at thy own desire." All right, hold that. Oh, that. Let's get Proverbs 18 and 1. Proverbs 18 and 1. It says, through, through desire. A man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. I'm gonna read that again. Through desire, a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. This brother, he, he's this brother right here is doing number study. All right. <clears throat> this brother is studying. He getting himself together. He, he he getting his spirit right. He's starting to gain that desire. He has that desire. He has that zeal. To the point that he separated himself, seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom, saying the same thing back in Sirach. All right. Um. There's another one in James. One second. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. James, James, James. One second. Uh, one second, Israel. I'm trying to find the one in James.
Ah. All right, all right, all right. Can't, can't find it at the moment. All right, so let's go back. Let's go back to uh, Sirach. Sirach chapter 6, verse 37. It says, Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord and meditate continually in his commandment. He shall establish thy heart and give thee wisdom at their own desire. So we got to find that desire. We got to have that desire for wisdom. All right? And how do you get that? Well, we read it all, all the script all the um the verses before that. It says if thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding, and if thou bow thy ear, thou shalt be wise. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee betimes unto him and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Okay? You must do we got these are the things you got to do at your own desire, and the most I will establish thee with wisdom. All right. Um, from there, from there. Let's get I'm almost done. I'm almost done. From there, let's get uh first Peter 4 and 12. First Peter chapter four verse twelve. <clears throat> the book of First Peter chapter four verse twelve. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. So Peter's Peter is saying here, says, Beloved, thing it is not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. So whatever trial tribulation come your way, don't look at it as being strange. Don't look at it as being strange and and and, 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 and something that, you know, because you could look at that, you could be like, damn, what is why this happened to me? Where did this come mm -hmm. from? You know? What what is this what what's going on? But it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice. Says, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Okay? So when trials and tribulations come our way, listen, don't think it's strange. Don't think it's something that came out of it. It came out of the blue or whatever the case is. And yes, it could be something that came out of nowhere. But look within it. Look spiritually within what was going on. The Mosai is trying to show you something. Okay. The Mosai is trying to show you something. So don't think it's strange. Don't don't bug out. Remember, remember in Sarai, he said, look, take it cheerfully. When you would change the lower state, be patient. All right. Be patient. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. All right? That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Okay? All right? So, Israel, I'm going to end it on that. I hope y'all got something. hope you gleaned something from the class. All right? Remember, look. Mm. Remember thy first love. Man. Remember, we got to get that zeal, get that fire back that we once had when we first came in this truth. That's, get that zeal. All 
right? So we all, even for myself, we all got to get that. We all got to get that back, <clears throat> you know, and keep it pushing in its truth. All right, don't let your spirit diminish or whatever the case is. Okay, even for brothers that get uh, that lose their rank or get demoted or whatever the case is, no, you got. We got to keep pushing. We got to keep mm -hmm. pushing. Got to keep fighting. All right. So with that, um, I'm just gonna say shalom. Osan Christ bless.